Okay, so this is the main class. I'm going to clean this up for now. And create another class. We'll call this class, um, again, just our typical student information, okay? So the student class. Just a standard class, so we don't need that public main. So let's just add a few properties to this class. Typical stuff like name and ID and so on. So we'll give it ID of what is it be like a, a, a private um, int ID <coughs> private uh, string. We'll just give it a name. And one more, we'll just give it a, um, a grade. So the string, okay, uh, let's go with the character, letter grade. This will be like character, letter grade, A, B, C, D, and F, and so on. <clears throat> okay, so go ahead and create the setters and getters. Again, just right click, shortcut is to go to the source and generate the getters and setters select all of them and click OK. okay. So we got our setters and getters. So for best practices, okay, always put your constructor right below the variable names here. I know uh, a few of you put like way mixed with all these functions down here, some put at the very bottom down here. Okay, it's not recommended. Um, your code will still run. It's okay. It's just that it's, it's really hard to find your constructor. So you should always put your constructor right below all the data fields. Okay, so it's easy to see because it's what the um, first thing that you look at when you look for a class, the constructor. What can I use and what type of data is passed to this constructor? Okay, so I'll put up here in the front. Uh, we'll just pass in. So we'll create a blank one. <coughs> just so that we can also um, create it because we, we may not want to pass all those data right away. And then we have the other one that has all of them, all the data. So here again, the int ID, uh, string for the name, and char for the grade. Again, the convention is always the same uh, variable name. So down here, we could just, um, you can call the getter and setter if you want. <clears throat> um, or we just go this ID, go that ID. Maybe it's good practice to do that, right? And if you don't put this ID here, if you just put ID, this ID up here will not affect it at all, will not be affected, so it's always be a zero. So you think that it's been changed, but it's not. Okay, so be very careful with that. We have the same variable name this way. So it's always safe to put this even though if it's not the same name. So you might shorten your typing, but still, you won't talk about um, safe. And then grade. Okay, so we got those set up. That is our uh, student class. <clears throat> and then we're gonna go to the arrays of op arrays of objects class and we're going to instantiate a couple of students. Anybody got it here? Okay. Um, go over here. <clears throat> I will leave it like that just in case if you need to, um, to check. So on the left side is where we're going to put our code. So we need to create an array of students. So we do like we did before. You put a student type. All right, the data type goes here, and then we put a bracket right after that. So now there's an array of students, of student class, right? <clears throat> and the array name will be just, again, we just call it students, again, plural, because when we, when we print out the loop, we want to say uh, students of, uh, a student of students, Right, for each student, and then we're going to say new student, and we're going to uh, assign 
maybe just three students. Okay. Notice I did not put the parentheses anymore. Okay. Initially, if you just create one student like this, you need to call the constructor like that with the parentheses. If it's an array, you won't do that here. Okay. You use the square brackets. Um, so, I mean, you, you can't do that. It's just like that. It's understood. Java will know that it's an array and you're calling that constructor um, um, <clears throat> of array constructor. Because this, this one here, again, is just a shell. That's all it is. Okay, it's a shell. The actual object is actually this inside whatever is inside here. And this three number three here, we're going to create three of these students inside it. So that this is when you instantiate the actual object called S1. Okay, that's why you don't need that, the, the brackets here. Right? So uh, just remember this part here. I'll leave this for you for now. I'm gonna I'm not gonna use it, but um, this S1, imagine that this S1 is inside the brackets here. You have S1, S2, S3 inside here, inside the array of students. So each of those students uh, has to be instantiated like this before you can use it, right? So now that I have created those um, a students array of three, I need to instantiate this way. So I'll just go students of the first one is always zero, and then you knew you knew that, and then now this is the constructor. <clears throat> so I have two of them, right? I have the blank one. That's why I'm allowed to do that. If I don't have this, you see that that shouldn't that, that won't work. Okay? Because I you have to provide one. Since I already provide this one, I have to provide this one if I want to use it. If I don't uh, provide it, then I can only use this one. So that's why it's usually safer to just do that just in case you might want to um, instantiate it this way. Okay? So <clears throat> We could do that, or we can call it all at once, one time, and supply the name and ID and grade. So we just quicker, just do it this way. Call it um, Joel Black. And, oh, I mean, no, the first is ID, right? Got that wrong. The first is ID, so it's an integer. I guess it's just one, two, three is fine. Second is name, and the third is the letter grade. So let's just say he got a B. You see that it's probably an error because we're so used to strings, and this is it says character, right? So this has to be a single quote, right? Okay. So if you're using char, it has to be a single quote. <clears throat> Again, just up to you. You can call it string. It's fine. It's just a memory size would be shorter, but not a big big deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's do another one. It's going to copy and paste two times. And we'll just change the index. The second student and the third student. And maybe this one here has uh, a different number. And let's be like uh, Mary Jane. And maybe she's smarter. She got an A. And this one here will be seven, eight, five. This will be like um, clock. So I guess it's not, not that smart in this case, right? <laughs> yeah, I need to get a solution for some vision. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he cheats. He uses like vision. Then. There you go. Okay. <laughs> And we know that. Okay, so we declare three students, and uh, they are contained inside this array called students. Okay, so each of those, so now you see that zero, ones, and twos, this like there's no meaning now. It's just a number. Whereas these, these can be meaningful. I could change this to say, um, you know, Joe, right? If it's a single object. Here is also a single object, but it's a list of students. So 
I can't put here Joe in here, unfortunately. Yeah, you can't do that here. Um, not in this type of array. You can do it in a list and, and a map. Okay, but not this one. Um, so for now, we're stuck with just the numbers. So we know that the first number is going to be for Joe, second is Mary, and third is Clark, and so on. So, and then from here on, it just, you will treat this just like uh, S1 here. You get its data, the uh, ID, name, and grade, same thing. Students of zero dot something, student of one dot something. So we can print them out here. <clears throat> so again, use a for loop. Uh, we can do the regular loop first. I from the zero, the first student. I of we know it's three because we say so, right? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, right, it's students.length, right, so we would do students.length, just like Tyler said, right, students.length, we'll give you that length, <coughs> I mean, it's always safe to do that, and then we we'll just iterate that, um, increment that until the end of that list, and actually, I, I mentioned earlier, you can't I put Joe here, I mean, you can, it's just that. It has to be a variable name. I mean, a, a variable name that has a number. Right. Like Joe could be one, then then that's fine. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So if I do like and Joe is zero like that, then then that's okay. Okay. But still, it's still going to be just zero. Okay. So we print their name and the information out. So we're going to be system out. Uh, we'll put the ID plus the ID, so we'll say students, okay, the index number of the students of I, that's the first one, and then we we'll get the ID, so get ID. Okay, you can copy this three times, and we'll print the other information out. So we'll get the name, and then the grade. So here we get get name, get grade, and then get, and that's how you print them out. I'm gonna just remove that for now. <clears throat> okay, so let's save this and run. And not as nice how you format this, but at least you got the data printed out. This is Joe's, this is Mary's, and this is Clark's. All right. So the tricky part was this. Okay. Just don't forget to in initialize. I mean to uh, uh, instantiate each object. If I have, if I have like uh, twenty-three of them. You have to do that 23 times, okay? And if you're setting data this way, then that could be complex because you do that manual 23 times. So that's why if you have that many number, how would you do it? How would you how would you initialize these so that you can call, you can use you can use this function here, this method to initialize that many? Yeah, you can use a use of for loop, right? Mm -hmm. So if you just add the data manually from the user, then you would do that every time with through a for loop. The first loop will be instantiate the first student, and then you read the data to it. Next, the next student, and so on. Or unless you read this data from a, a text file uh, or from a, a database, then that's instant, right? Nice, but you can do that much quicker. <clears throat> Okay, so we got that. Now, how about 
what if you want to print um, using the other loop? I mean, we, we used the for each loop. How do you how do you do that? So for each loop. <clears throat> Right, again, for each, the first part is the data type. What data type is it? You look up here, right, student. Okay, so for each student data type, and we'll call it student, lowercase, of, the colon means of, students. Okay, for each student element in the student's array, print them out. So to print them out, I'm just going to copy these here and put it here. And we'll just comment this out. And the only difference is now instead of the students of I, it will be this student here. Okay? So it will just be like that, student. So each individual student now. And you should get the same result. Okay. Again, this one here you can't track, you cannot know <clears throat> the index. If you want to know, you have to track it with a counter of some sort. Okay, um, let's see what else I need to cover here. I also want to talk about the project before we uh, leave. So we got the objects here. Uh, so here we're using a constructor to set the data, right? To, if you, you can also um, update its data by using the, uh, the, uh, the um, functions. So if you want to change like from flux grade, since he um, made some improvement, let's just say we're going to give him a B, right? So you can go student uh, of 2 dot, we're going to set his grade <coughs> to a letter uh, B. Okay. He told us he wasn't cheating, so we got a B now. And so that's been changed. Let's say you update the data. Just make sure you reference it's it's a reference here. The the index number. And that should be B now instead of uh, C. <clears throat> okay. So the next thing I'm gonna turn this back on. Okay, the loop up here. Just control forward slash. <clears throat> and I want to just talk about, go over that um, cloning thing. Okay, just be very careful when you do that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so let's just say that if you create another variable down here and you call it student, it has to be the same type, okay? It has to be the exactly same type. Um, with the same dimension, it cannot be a different dimension, and you you you, you reassign that. Uh, you can call it here just guest, and <clears throat> let's just say this guest is equal to the students. Okay, notice I did not say guest is equal to new guest or the size. If you assign it this way, that it automatically uh, points to the students object here, the students array. It's a reference type. So now they have the same information, <clears throat> exactly the same size. So here, instead of students, if I say uh, guess, if I change it to guess, and then change that grade to an A, this is like hacking, right? So the hacking to the grade and change it to an A, right? <clears throat> if I do that, 
And if you print it out, you'll see that first clock gray is C, but suddenly down here it's been changed to A. And we haven't changed anything in the student's uh, array. Okay, so we change it through the guest array, but because, again, it's mutable, right? Mutable, you change one, it affects the other. Because the guest changes the grade from C to an A, now clock grade has been changed to an A. Okay, and down here we only print the student um, <clears throat> and not the guest at all. And if I were to print the guest, we'll get this information too. If I put guest down here instead of students, well, not, not in this case because I'm, I'm using um, a, a for each loop. But, um, so, so again, this way you have the same data as the same record. So if you change data here, you will lose the other data automatically. So don't, don't do it this way unless you intentionally want to do it this way. Okay? If you just want to copy all the data here to this guest account, or this guest uh, array, then you can do the clone. You can say, copy, make a clone of the student array by doing like students.clone. There's a clone function here. Okay. So now you make a copy of the data and you assign that to the student, to the guest. And so now it's completely independent. So if you save this and run it, Okay, you see, um, uh, wait, did I make something? Like, um, return, this meaning copy may depend on the class of the object. So maybe that's the word depend, right? So it, it could mean that um, if that object is clonable or not, then whatever. Yeah. So. But, but typically that's how you do it. You, you clone it so that you don't affect, uh, it doesn't affect the other um, one. So right. I think if, if I were to use, um, uh, uh, like maybe primitive types might be different. Well, just just a regular.